Located just outside of Paris, Saint-Quentin and Avaline played host to the first round of the 2018 UCI BMX Supercross World Cup Tour. I love racing in France. Um, it's the first race of the year, so I'm excited and really happy. The atmosphere is always amazing. The fans love BMX, and they're really happy to have us racing here. It's cold, not like home. <laughs> France is a historic cycling nation. Dominant in road racing, it's now becoming popular in the BMX race circuit. We will have a big audience watching, so the atmosphere will be really good. Uh, French people love BMX, so that's going to be great. It's going to be at night, so it's going to be dark with the light. Yeah, really looking forward to it. With a population of more than 230,000, St. Quentin and Aveline is situated 25 kilometers to the west of Paris and considered part of the metropolitan area. This is the first World Cup stop held on French soil since Fred Juice 2010 as part of the Rock du Jour event. It's great to be at home. I was a kid in 2010 when that was the last time. It's great for the people. They can be here and feel the atmosphere and maybe understand a bit more. It's always amazing to have a World Cup in France and especially here in Paris. It looks like a lot of people came and show up and uh, the grand looks, looks pretty full, so it's, uh, it's cool and uh, hopefully they under the show and we can, uh, yeah, we can make a big show tonight. This broke up is earlier in the year than we used to, so I'm not like on my A game yet, but I feel really good. I like the track here in Paris and I'm excited to race here. I haven't raced this year, so it's gonna be like my first race. I'm happy to be here. Let's see what happens. <laughs> A little cold here in France, but you kind of got to take it. Everybody's got to race in the cold. I'm not really going to put any markers on what I need to do this weekend with a whole ton of pressure. Just want to start off with the first World Cup and, and get out there and ride well. All eyes will be on me, but it's, it's not like it's just me, because obviously there's Joris, there's Jeremy, there's Romain. So, okay, I won last year, but I think the fans want to see the French win, but they want, I think, us to perform as a group. It would be amazing uh, to win here in front of the, of the home crowd and uh, yeah, we'll, all, we'll try to do my best and uh, try to be, to be on top of the box tonight. The track here in Paris is home to the French national team and is the only covered outdoor track on the circuit. At 390 meters or 1300 feet long, the track is just 10 meters shorter than Papendal and 6 meters longer than Zolder in Argentina. It's pretty much a technical track, uh, not much pedaling, cool jumps. Pretty French, a little bit slower than other tracks we are used to. It is technical because it is steeper than usual. It's a kind of like Manchester, maybe less, less dangerous. Coming down the big start hill, the first straight is wide with a double that leads into a big step up, step down into the first berm. First straight after the first jump, it's a long flat straight to the second jump, so it's going to be a big sprint. The pro straight has three doubles and a step up before the riders enter the second turn. Second straight is uh, really hard to dial in, especially if you come out with the full speed out of the first turn. The riders are then challenged as they make their way down the difficult and technical third straight. I love it because you go so fast every time. It's really challenging. You always have to be so focused. After rounding the final corner, they make their last push to the finish line. Well, I think for us girls, third and last straight will definitely be a bit hard. It's going to be hard to keep it smooth and keep it clean. So that's definitely going to be a make it or break it point. Everybody's going to be super close. There's going to be a lot of passing. Best racer, the guy that wants to win is going to win. So it'll be good. With everyone gearing up for the lead into Tokyo 2020, a lot of the young riders are coming up through the ranks, challenging the current champions for their spot at the Olympics. There was 56 girls. I think that's the most we've ever had in the World Cup. So I was really excited to be here. I was standing in the pits and I saw a lot of girls I had never seen before. And I was like, well, it's a really good thing to see. The time when I first started doing the World Cup, there was a group of five, ten rider, which, which was like above everyone. Now there's a much more rider that can make their way into the main. So it's not like easy from the first round. First up comes round number one. The size of the round is dependent on the size of the total field. 
while the top four qualify through, the rest of the pack have to battle it out in the last chance round where only the top two make it through. After that, it's a journey through each of the elimination rounds where the top four qualify on. Canadian Tori Nyhawk injured his back in practice and didn't start the race. In heat 15, French rider Liu Laupre ran off the track to come in last. He didn't fare much better in the last chance qualifier and was eliminated for good. In heat 13 of the round of 32s, Argentina's Ezequiel Torres got passed at the post by Julian Luqui of France and was out of the running. In heat four of the round of 16s, Frenchman Vincent Pelluard, Mariana Pajon's new husband, placed a disappointing fifth and failed to qualify. It wasn't a great day for Team Argentina as Federico Villages was eliminated in Heat 7 after a 5th place finish. In the women's round of 8s, the only surprise was Mariana Diaz of Argentina getting knocked out in Heat number 2. With the day progressing and the field shrinking, it was time for the women's quarterfinals. I feel good, just a little bit windy and cold, but it's fine because we're warming up. So I'm exciting for the 1 4 and hope I will get to the semi. In the first quarterfinal, current Supercross champ Laura Smulders got the whole shot out of the gate with teammate Judy Bao in hot pursuit. Smulders kept the lead, but Marion Torres of France and Miru Nagare of Japan failed to qualify. Pretty smooth lap, so. Just want to carry it on from here, do good gates, do good laps, keep it smooth, and then hopefully go on to the final and make it to the podium. Russia's Natalia Aframova got out of the gate first with Saya Sakakabara and Lauren Reynolds of Australia close behind. Sakakabara crossed the line in first while Nadia Priest of Germany took the fourth qualifying spot. I was really happy with the way I was riding, you know, getting good gates, clean backside and pretty much everything, so I was really happy with my laps. Junior world champion Bethany Shriver of Britain had the inside gate, lane number one, but she crashed out coming out of the first berm, leaving Belgium's Elke van Hoof to take the win. In the final women's quarter, Mariana Pajon took the early lead, but Yaroslava Bondarenko of Russia overtook the Olympic champion to take first lane choice in the semis. This lap was much better than the other one, so I'm just hanging in there and, and trying to do one lap at a time. With the women's semis now all but decided, it was time for the men's quarterfinal. Romain Mathieu was a man on a mission in the first of the men's quarterfinals. 2017 Supercross champion Sylvain André of France kept pace with his teammate in second place. Simon Marcard of Switzerland qualified in third with another Frenchman, Damien Godet, in fourth. It's getting harder and harder. Yeah, gonna be consistent, fast, and try to make it to the end. Former world and current French national champion Joris Dodet made the track look easy with his smooth style in heat number two. Britain's Keelan Isidore tucked in for the second ahead of Joris Harmson and Carlos Ramirez, who also made the cut. I'm enjoying it and I'm having a good time on, on my bike and uh, on the track. I'm going to try to keep the, the inside gate and uh, we'll see what happened tonight, but uh, feeling good. Quarter number three saw a battle of the Giants with Nick Keeman, Edzus Tremenis and Evgeny Komarov leading the way. Romain Mayette of France scooped up the last qualifying spot, leaving Latvia's Edzus Tremenis out of the mix. For five months of rehab, it's not going bad. <laughs> I'm having a lot of fun, and uh, sure, I'm missing some, like, tweaking. Switzerland's David Graf showed his track smarts with a solid run in quarter number four. Jeremy Renkerl, Tori Navrastad, and current world champion Corbin Shira of the U.S. also qualified. Tested my skills there in that quarter. Gives you a little more energy when you get through, kind of just making it through the race, having to pick your way through, so having a lot of fun. Next up, it was time for the women's semifinals. Dutch favorite Laura Smulders came up against Olympic champion Mariana Pajon in the first women's semi. 
lining up behind the gate, Jason, we have Laura Smulders, two-time Olympian and bronze medalist in London. That's definitely the hardest part, doing your gate like 100% every time. Every gate I do, I want to be perfect. The two-time Olympic champion, the queen of BMX, Mariana Pajor. I'm just trying to do one lap at a time and feel better each lap. I'm hanging out in there, just trying to do my best. Heat one. Pajon had a slow start and slipped to the back of the pack, leaving Smulders to storm ahead, followed by Van Hoof and Aframova. Where's Pajon? I don't know, but it looks like Smulders straight to the front. Van Hoof jumping into the second turn, and Smulders coming out. making moves, she's battling with Madame Valentino in that final turn. Smulders has got it in the bag. Pajon just squeaked through in the fourth to qualify through. The official is Smulders, Van Hoof, Aframova and Pajon just. Heat number two. So number 89, Bondarenko, Russia choosing lane one. Next to her, Saya Sakakibara always has a smile on her face. Another junior. I think for me this year was to get into the race scene of like, European girls and girls who actually really race because I don't get that much competition in Australia. Next to her, number 29, Ruby Hoisman from the Netherlands. Know she's fundamentally sound and on the lane eight from Canada, McKeelson, she's definitely shown to step it up as well. In the second semi, Natalia Suvarova crashed out on the first jump. We've got a rider down already. I think he was one of the Russians. First-year elite Saya Sakakabera got the whole shot and led around the track. All Sakaki Bar is super impressed with Drew McKilson coming from lane eight straight to second with the Russian Bondarenko in third, but she may be in trouble. Bondarenko, Bao, and Canada's Drew McKilson all qualified through to the main event. After the women, it's time for the men's semi-finals. We have got all the 33 playing world champion in 2011, Yoris Dode. I've been feeling good. Uh, the track is, uh, is tricky, you know, it's very technical and uh, we're going, going fast, so it's, uh, we have to be, uh, we have to be uh, really careful, and, uh, but uh, I'm enjoying it. Game number three on the 148. Twan and Ghent from the Netherlands. The goal is just to make some good laps, have fun in the track, so we're looking for some lines and passing people. Next up on the 100, he's been absolutely flying all day long. Roman Mayu out of France. I just feel I'm getting like better and better on every race. Last year I was learning, was my first time on the, in the main event on the World Cup, first podium. And now I just know how it feels and I know that I can do it. Joris Dode had the favorite inside lane, but it was Tuan Van Ghent who stormed out of lane three to take the lead into the first turn. It's gonna be Van Ghent. Dode, it looks like Matthew, but is gonna take up some room in that first corner. Oh, Joris Dode got slightly out of control. It's like Van Ghent go around the outside, so Van Ghent. He left a trail of French riders in his wake with Daudet, Mathieu and Godet all qualifying into the final event. For the official, Juan Van Ghent, Doris Daudet, Roman Mathieu and Demian Godet. We have uh, Evgeny Komarov coming off the track carrying his bike. I'm sure he didn't plan on doing that. Semi number two saw reigning Supercross champ Sylvain Andre line up in lane one with Nick Kiemen outside in lane eight. 
up close and personal. Number two, Sylvan Andre wants the crowd to get loud. I feel I'm ready. I've done everything I could do in the winter. So just like reset everything, think positive, and go back on the gate and do what you like, what you actually need to do. Current world champion, USA rider Corbin Shira. You gotta keep a level head and stay consistent and, and stay calm and not let it take over when you get to those semis. You really just gotta try to keep things the same and, and have fun and go fast. And then Nick Keeman, he's been known to win a race or two from lane eight. Lane eight has worked for me in the past, so just focus on yourself. You're in control, there's no one blocking you. You can just do your own thing. Second semifinal for the elite men on the gate. Carlos Ramirez had a bad gait and quickly fell off the pace. It is Sherrard up, Raff ducking underneath toe, Raff in there with one, Sherrard in two, French rider goes down, Sylvan Andre working his way up into two, Jason. Yeah, Sylvan Andre up into two, Sherrard finds his way in third. Look at the grab, Andre, Sherrard, and I believe Keeman. David Graff led around the track, but Andre pulled hard on the last straight to take a photo finish win. Carbon Shira and Nick Kimmon also qualified through. Rick Farrell walking off the track. Looks like he might have a bit of an achy back. Back up to the top of the start hill as the women made their way up for the main event. Smulders had the inside lane next to Saya Sakakabera while Pahon was stuck in the middle after a poor finish in the semis. In lane number one, your back-to-back -back World Cup champion in elite women, Laura Smulders. You already feel the adrenaline coming in and your heartbeat going up. I just like to be one with my bike and, and ride the track as smooth as I can and cross the finish line first, hopefully. Next to her on the 88 plates. She came second in junior women in the world championships last year, Saya Sakakibara. What I learned was just not to look across, just keep looking forward, don't even look about or look who I'm racing. Next up, the double Olympic champion, the queen of BMX, Mariana Pajon. I always do my 100% because I love winning. No matter if I, I'm not in my 100%, I'll give it. Here we go, Elite Women main event. Natalia Aframova moved across to close out Sakaka Vera as Smolders took the clear early lead into the first turn. Smolders, Sakaki Vara, followed by Pahon in fourth. Pajon struggled from the start and was stuck back in the middle of the pack. Smolders rode away with the easy win. Natalia Aframova showed her experience over Sakakabera and held on to second with Sakakabera earning the third. Going into the final I was a little bit nervous. I knew I could do it. I had a good gait. had a great first straight, and then from there I knew if I keep it clean, I can win this. After the first corner, I, was, I saw that I was in third, and I raced with Natalia, the girl who was in second before, and I passed her down third straight, so that was my, you know, my plan. I was catching her down the inside of the third straight, but yeah, I didn't back myself enough, and as she started coming across the inside, I kind of backed off. Across the finish line, I saw the, the fire going up. I'm like, yes, this is a really cool win. Finished third. It felt, felt awesome, yeah. Holding the fastest lap from the semis, Sylvain Andre earned first lane choice in the men's final, snagging lane one next to David Graff of Switzerland. Nick Keeman was forced to take the outside lane, a place that suited his plans just fine. They're going to make some noise for the boy here, Sylvan Andre. When I show up on the gate, it means I'm all in. Even if you, maybe your body is not, if your mind is ready, you're good to go. Lane number three on the 24 plate, your reigning world champion out of the USA, Corbin Shira. You've got to keep a level head and to stay calm and 
it's the guy that's, that's out there that's really confident and consistent throughout the day that's going to get the job done. On the 33 plate, the 2011 world champion, hometown boy, Yoris Dode. On the 100 plate, he's been absolutely flying from minute one today. Another French rider, Roman Mayu. Like before, I didn't really know. I know I was going fast and all the stuff, but now that I made it, I know that I can do it again. He's won from lane eight countless times from the Netherlands, the 2015 world champ, Nick Kimmon. Yeah, last year at Papen I made the main ones, and uh, both days a Frenchy won. You know, yesterday I thought like it could be cool if, you know, I could win it here. Here we go. Complete silence. With a good gate start, Keeman then powered his way across the track from lane eight and into the lead. The crush of riders came to a halt as David Graff hit the step down, forcing Sylvain Andre off the track. Keeman looking to do exactly what he did in 2015. Joris Daudet tried to make a move on Mathieu, but his fellow Frenchman shut him down. Keeman is running away from it. It was a statement win for Dutchman Nick Kimmen, who was joined on the podium by Romain Mathieu and Joris Daudet. There's your official Kimmen, Mathieu, Daudet, Van Gent, Daudet. All the fans, they were like screaming. They wanted the French guy to win. I picked lane eight again in the final. And I was just so focused on getting that first three cranks, get that first jump good, going to the inside as fast as possible. You can feel the atmosphere, all the crowd screaming, and that was special, that was good. It's like a boost. I had no clue who was in second. I just knew I need to get to the finish line as fast as I can. You know, I focused on myself, and I'm uh, glad I didn't get past. I wanted to get that win, you know, especially when you're racing at home. I got second in there. That was a great day. I'm happy with the way I was riding and all the stuff. I was in tears after the main, it was an emotional win for me because Jelly, you know, I visited him uh, a couple days ago and uh, he wished me good luck and, you know, this one's for him. After a great day of racing, the Dutch team of Kiemen and Smolders now sit atop the rankings. Winning this first World Cup so early in the season feels really good and gives a big, big boost for tomorrow. I didn't think about the result, didn't think about the main, what was going to happen, just one lap at a time, and uh, it paid off. That's a wrap for the first round of the UCI World Cup from France. Next up is round two and time for the runners-up of round one to fight for redemption. After the two French stops, the tour then heads to the Netherlands, Belgium then a quick stop at the World Championships in Azerbaijan before Argentina hosts the final two rounds later in the year.